Yeah, we're just driving out of Cheverton on the old sat nav. Place called Pouncey to meet Adam, and uh, we're off down to uh, Falmouth. Hopefully, to bring a, a 60 foot yacht up round Land's End. We're going down to check the boat out and check the moorings out where we've got to come and go to. And we'll see how it goes. When we get there, I've got to meet Adam at the farm. Over and out. We just met Adam in his bongo. Well, we call it a bongo, I call it a Mazda. I don't know the difference. Um, I put my sat nav away on the wait for um, Adam to lead us there now to get us to the farm. So, fingers crossed. Just following Adam now to the farm. I got, he's got the sat nav showing him the way, so fingers crossed. Get to the farm now and um, chat with the owner and make sure the boat's okay before we go down there. And then we take it the next stage, we go down there and we check the boat out physically and then decide whether we're going to move it or whether there's other things to do before we can move it. But this week is perfect week to move it, so fingers crossed. A little bit lost, but um, the guy in the yellow van in front of Adam now come out and picked us up. And we're just following him up to the farm now, fingers crossed. We have arrived. The guy's a paraglider pilot. He's got his little windsock, and we're on the farm. And Lira's having a nose round already. So let's go and see what we saw out. Yeah, of course I have. They pay me through the bank. This is a tunnel down at Plymouth. We'll get there. We've been on the road for a few hours now. Adam's just getting the uh, life jacket checked out by the man. He needs a new gas bottle. That's why I'm using The one I got, you don't never need a bottle. Anyway, we've arrived at Falmouth. Here we're going to get in stretch your legs. You get the bag, I'll let you carry it all. <laughs> so whatever. We don't want too much for now, do we? Yeah, good job, like. It's the taxi boat to get out to the boat. And it's just down the harbour. So it's going to be dark before we know it. I've got a, a quick walk around on the deck. This boat, as I said, did actually make some film. But uh, we've got barbed wire on the top here, so we must have had a few nasty passes coming on board. But uh, this is Fruitful Harvest 3. I don't know if you've seen it on the telly, but she was on telly. So now we need to check her out. And we're out through there tomorrow. So we need to uh, get organised and see what we got. You alright there? Inside the deep dark village. I've got the fuel tank, we definitely got enough fuel, have we? Have it. There's a pipe and you do something and then it goes, shows you where the level is. 
should be a valve to open it uh, the air into it. So where's the level now? Well, we're, we're on the boat for the night. Um, Lira settled down, sleepy out. I'll get you some dinner in a minute, Lira. Do you want some din dins? I'll get you in a minute. And uh, I got to sleep there because the other bedroom's soaking wet. And we got us to sleep there. We're having a cup of tea. And Adam's upstairs trying to wire up a battery Yo. to get a, a pluggly system going. We've got a 12 volt battery. I've got an old connected. And what power are you getting? Oh, I've got let me know when you know what. Well, let me know when you know what charge you're getting. Okay, we've here. We got here last night. We've um, had a sleep. Today we've got up. We've got a cup of tea on the go, and um, we're going to go through the boat. We've got to try and stow this lot safe somehow. It's all right saying we go to sea. It's going to be next calm the next couple of days, but. It might not be the couple of days after, and you might be at sea, and all this is loose on deck. And if this lot goes washing about, it's going to smash straight through the side. So we've got to tie all that down, but first of all, we've got to get the boat checked out, and make sure we are going. If we can go, then we'll worry about tying everything down after. So, um, that'd be sunny day. Plenty of boats down this part of the country, and you can go out at any state of the tide. Fantastic. So, um, we're getting it all ready to rock and roll. guys we haven't got an anchor we haven't got anchor winch the only anchor we got is this small one here we've got no anchor chain so we've got no um no way of stopping the boat at the other end we haven't got a mooring to go to so it's like an airplane we haven't got an airfield to land on we've got these containers that are full of fucking oil and water adam's saying empty them over the side and chuck them in i said fuck off you can't do that then he's now he's saying empty them fill them up with concrete and we use them as an anchor. Where the fuck's he going to get concrete out here? Okay, we're getting somewhere. We've got one battery here. It's got to be tied down and stowed down with all this when we tie it down. And that's running up to the light on the front. And it's an LED bulb that'll run all the light on that battery. And we've got two LED bulbs lights here running. And we've got them on another battery in the cabin. And that's going to run two lights on top of there. So we've got enough power for our lights. And um, we've made a makeshift anchor here in an emergency that just go over the side, but it'll only drip in 20 30 foot of water, and, and then it might not hold this if there's any gale or wind picks up. But um, basically, we want it for in this harbour if that motor cuts out, we're going to be running into a lot of boats unless we can pin her down. And um, I've got two lines that I've got to put on here to go on to the mooring lines to chuck over for whoever comes to 
to meet us at the morning and um, got to make another one up at the back here so I um, don't know where that fucking rope's gone but I did have a rope here it's gone I can throw it somewhere out but anyway we're getting somewhere so we'll play it right here Well, we've, um, we're on the ferry going back to the shop to get some food and uh, the man's come over and picked us up off the boat we're on and we're going to have a little bit of a run down to the shop and see what's going on. Yeah, we're going to have a little bit of a run down to the shop and see what's going on. Yeah, we're going to have a little bit of a run down to the shop. Half past three, we've got to get down here and meet the man with the ferry to take us back over. Hopefully we're leaving tomorrow morning or tomorrow dinner. And we've been shopping, getting enough food and water. Adam's in there getting, we're having cotton chips for tea for tonight. And uh, we'll get back on the boat and meet the ferry man in a minute. So, um, our Rex over there. I'm sorry, we're waiting for the ferry, man. Having cob and chips. So, Yo, the, weather, the weather has been unbelievable. Adam got his cob. Big bit of cob, that. Not the regular. Small it ain't hurt your cob. Can't believe it. Every day off. She's got us for small. Well, we're back on the boat. We've had. Um, a mess about, I tied these containers in because they're full up with oily water tied that one in, I tied all the drums along the side there I managed to tie most of that in place with a big rope it'll move about but it won't go around the bay, around the deck and um, we've got an anchor big jewelry rig there that's just total emergency and going out of here because when we go out of here tomorrow that's the way I'm going, down through there so, um, I've got to reverse off, it's on a single mooring, it's on a swinging mooring. So I've got to reverse off the swinging mooring, taking the background that way, and get the nose to go out, to go up to here. And then we're going straight up through there, and out and round. And that's how we get out. So, but Adam ain't made his mind up where he wants to go yet, he's a little bit worried, what about power and... I don't know, but we will make our mind up overnight now, get settled down now, everything's done, a cup of tea, a cup of wheat beers, and then we've got till the morning to sort the landing where we're going to land. So as long as you can get somewhere to meet me on that jetty, I'll get this boat on the jetty, and provide you with permission. So, that's quiet night tonight, I just bang my head on a fucking galley door, and I've got headache. But, um, I'm tired, I must admit, we was up early. We had a late night last night, and near is tired, so fingers crossed for the morning. It is good here, that's all I know. We managed to get two lights going up there, as I say, a light up there going. So we got the two two navigation lights on the port and starboard, so we should be in business. We got a power here, that, this runs the um, front light, so we just got to join that up, and that permanently runs the front light. And we're in fucking business. This junk, as I say, is not a lot I can do. I tied the worst bit on a few little bits ain't gonna hurt. But it's, it's calm weather anyway. But with my luck, we do get storms. End the story. So, catch us in the morning. That evening, sat in the warehouse with Adam and Lyra, having a beer. We had cotton chips for tea, and I'm well happy. So I got a couple of nice. Wheat Tesco's beers. 
I get me um, sat nav out and navigation unit and I work out a course. I let the machine plot the course for us because Navionics, we all use it, it's, it's pretty good. It plotted the course all the way around. I then went back over it mile by mile, checking it to make sure it was okay, and it was okay. So now I goes into the settings where it tells me how long it's going to take. Now bear in mind, I've set the Navionics on my phone for my boat. My boat's a 20-footer, uh, my sailboat, and um, she averages on the small engine, or it would sell 2.2 miles an hour, or 2.2 knots. Anyway, it comes back now, working out at that speed, that this boat is going to take two days, 17 hours. Well, bear in mind we would be going uh, four mile an hour, or four knots. Possibly a bit more, but I don't know. Anyway, Adam now says, about petrol then, it's not going to take more than the 18 hours, they said. And I told him, I said, well, I told you it was going to take longer than that. I said, we're not on a piece of concrete going around. We've got to fight tides and currents and wind. Anyway, he said, the fuel tank down there where it says 1,500 litres. On the other side, there's a marker that says 600 litres. So I said, well, don't worry about it. It's 1,500 litres. But we couldn't check, physically check the size of the tank. I couldn't see it. So he got me going online now and checking the engine out. The engine is a 310 horsepower um, Caterpillar engine. Nice engine, it was running beautiful. Um, so now he's got me checking online, and online it's saying that this engine is going to average 34 gallons an hour. But bear in mind, this is all worked out running flat out. There's no way we're going to run flat out. You don't run boats flat out, only in emergencies. I'm going to be coming up at about four, maybe five knots, I'm not sure. Anyway, Adam's now got me doubting whether we could have enough fuel. So the next thing I know, he's on the phone to the owner. We need more fuel. So I said, tell him we will bring the boat up if he thinks there's enough fuel. I am willing to bring the boat down to fuel. If it runs out of fuel, then we'll be um, calling the Coast Guard out. But I was still willing to come. Adam just did not want to come. So anyway, it didn't. I wants more fuel. I, it's Pete said we need this. Pete said we need that. Pete, it's all Pete, what Pete said. But um, anyway, the owner didn't want to put more fuel in and Adam didn't want to go. So there we are, stuck there now. What are we going to do? So I'm still trying to talk Adam into going, but he is not going to go. End of. So it's time to get to bed. Anyway, the main worry that I had of having nowhere to come, as I said, I couldn't drop the anchor. Originally, we were going to come up here into the bay and just drop the anchor, but with no anchor, I said I needed a mooring. So by now, anyway, the owner has organised a mooring so as we can go on the seawall over at Biddeford. So I'm quite happy to come in there and anchor on the seawall. So as far as I'm concerned, we're all set, ready to go in the morning. Ever and Adam don't want to go. But I wait till the morning and I'll sort out in the morning and see how it goes. Anyway, we're all set. The Arbor, the um, ferryman's been told to we'll call him nine o'clock and ready to be pulled off. So it's just a matter of getting a night's sleep and wait and see what happens in the morning. If we don't put the fuel in and go in the next week or two, where this boat's going. It won't be to go till the next tide, and the next tide is dark in the morning. When the tides swing round and you go on the night, it's dark at night. So it won't be going out there until next year. So at two hundred pound a week more in fees, this is another boat. Uh, Alan got a phone call. Trying to get yeah. the captain board. Yeah, so. We just sat, sat here having a few beers. Nah, it'd be gone, this be gone by dinner if we want to go. Nah, it's not a problem in the night.
Dárunk. Vagy baj. Én a pagancska van az ösztönt. Well, at least the, the boat's big enough for Nero to run around on, isn't it, madam? Ah, she's having a little ball. She's, um... No, no. We were um, just having a cup of tea, waiting for Darren to come and pick us up. So, um... Yeah, they really want that for a minute. So, um... We'll be getting off the boat as soon as Darren gets here and heading home. And then we'll have to, well, I can't see them moving it now because of the, the way the dark nights are closing in and the weather. We had a, we had a weather window now with all this, um, with all this fucking shit here. He, he ain't going to take this out in storms because even they're tied down now. But we would have been taking a chance that the sea did stay like this. But they're not tied in. They're not against the side. So... If they started rattling about in the store and it wouldn't be long before they broke off. So, fruitful harvest, there's nothing fruitful about this fucking harvest. Yeah, nothing fruitful about it at all. Well, basically this morning, Adam didn't want to go, so we got off the boat and come over and the owner had come down. And he's been in touch with another guy who was a skipper, a proper qualified skipper. And he's worked at 60, 70 foot boats. And he's got a mate who's thinking of buying it, so he's now come down. And that's the guy in front of me now with the bag. He's going over to check the boat out. And hopefully he's going to take it off Darren's hands, because they know what they're doing. And uh, he's thinking of moving it out to Biddeford. So hopefully I'm still going to go up on the boat. Darren, um, can't, uh, what's his name, won't. He's fucking terrified. So, um, yeah, hopefully we're still going to take him up and I'm going to take him in over the bar. But we'll have a guy in charge, so all I do is take orders. So fingers crossed that Darren can get it both of his hands. Darren, the owner, is taking the, um, the skipper that's come down to look at the boat. He's an electrician, boat electrician as well, so we can go off and let... Yeah, he's going back over. I thought it's best we stay here and let them get on with it. Yeah, so they they go out and uh, do the um, govins. Only if Adam go, he, he sit here talking shit to the man. You don't, don't want it. He just does not want to be hearing it. The rubbish. So they're going to go out to the boat out there, and he'll make his mind up whether they're buying it. So there they go. Well, fifty minutes to an hour later. They come back on shore and we're all sat down have a nice cup of tea. And then we were out this young kitty, 28 years of age. He would have took the boat up. He didn't care about all the loose stuff on the deck. Didn't care about, you know, like me. But now he comes out with, he can't go because of the engine problem. Now that was me thinking the engine was perfect because we ran it about four times, and, and once we ran it for an hour. After I stopped it, I left it for five, ten minutes, and I went down and checked it. Lovely temperature. It was brought down from um, Grimsby about six months ago, flat out. And I haven't run out of petrol, I didn't miss a heartbeat. So anyway, he's like, telling them they need a diver to get under the boat and all the rest of it. But that's it or there, he wasn't going to bring the boat down. If he had skipper papers, he didn't bring a boat down like that. He'd lose his um, papers. He'd be sort of barred more or less, wouldn't he? Anyway, so end of this story, the boat's not coming down. Um, I feel gutted, but there you go. I can't win them all. In the lane, about 10 minutes from base now. Left Adam and Darren at the farm, and I've got the sat nav on now to get me back on the old um, 6 1, and I'll be heading home. It's going to take me about 35 40 minutes to get back to the boat, a bit of shopping, get the wood burner going. I think I'll watch the Saturday night and a nice blazy evening. So that's the end of that story, and so end the lesson. I'll let you have a little 
video now, a very add some text to this. 